living Bible. The wise... You read it yourself. You are seeing it now. It's on the screen. Read. One, two, go. The wise man saves for the future. But the foolish man spends whatever he gets. He spends whatever he gets. The wise man saves for the future. The foolish man spends whatever he gets. Like tomorrow is not coming. Listen, the problem is not the size of a man's income. The problem is the size of his mind. The way he thinks. Tell somebody, it doesn't matter how much you receive. Listen, if you follow what I'm going to share with you now, it will make you rich. I mean in, in cash and assets and lands. And you know what I mean now? I'm trying to say in all the things that money can refer to. Everything. You see, maybe I should give you a little more story. How I started saving. Okay? Because he just told you that the foolish man spends whatever he gets. He says, but the wise man saves for the future. We were still a young church and um, we had to spend everything. Because, in fact, I also got money from, you know, the friends and others who, who sent me money. All the money we could get in the church was not enough. So I needed more money. And thank God I never had to ask them. But they sent me money. And so we would use money for hiring chairs, money for hiring the place, money for just name it. Follow up, I'll, I'll give them money to go and visit, you know, write down the names of all the people who are going to visit during the week. Okay? I'll go on visitation and then my other folks who go out on visitation would divide all the people who are going to visit. So there's some of you here, I came to visit you. Yeah. So we'll do all that. And we're spending all the money because there was just not enough. One day, I called the Pastor Tom, who was not Reverend Tom now, Pastor Tom. And I, I called him and I said, uh, he was the one who was keeping the records. So I said, how much did we receive this past month? He went, got his records, and he said to me, 8,000 naira. I said, so how much is left? <laughs> he smiled, he said, it's finished. I said, 8,000 naira is finished. I didn't even know that we, we, we could have 8,000 naira. I said, impossible. 8,000? How? What did we do for, with 8,000? He was trying to write the things. That, I was not interested. No. He didn't get my point. My point wasn't give me the list of what we did. I was not trying to balance the equation. My point was, what in the world did I do with 8,000 naira? Dear God. I said, what about the previous month? 8,000 naira, about, you know, somewhere around 8,000 naira also. So I found out that in the last three months, we had had up to 8,000 naira each month. I said, I spent 8,000 naira, God Almighty, on what? This is impossible. How could I have done that? Spent everything? How, how could I? Then I said, now, let me tell you what. From this month, you will save 5,000 naira. Hear what I'm telling you. We will use only three. <laughs> Listen to me. I didn't say save three. We will use five. I said save five. We will use three. He said, okay. That month, for the first time, 
He saved 5,000 naira. We operated with three. And we had some extra over the five. For the first time, we had money. Every time it finished, it was normal. And there was no problem. We weren't owing anybody. So we could have continued. I said, what? That's wrong. I said, save five. At the end of this month, we had 5,000 naira owing nobody. We were rich. That was the beginning. And from then on, I knew how to save. And I would save and save and always save. Because God said to save. He said, if you are wise, you will save. If you are a fool, you will spend everything. Are you following what I'm telling you? Imagine that you wanted a facility from a bank. They will ask you, how much do you have? Then you say, I don't have anything. I just want you to give me everything. They say, get out of here. <laughs> you have to have something. And from there, I started learning to have something. I saved five. And the rest is history. I kept on saving. I kept on saving much more than I received. Because I determined that I was not going to save 20%. No, not 50%. I will save more. Five out of eight to be saved. What a principle. So principle number one. You already know it, right? Spend less than you earn. Much less than you earn. Be wise. Spend less than you earn. Don't say the money is not enough. I just told you. Listen, under normal circumstances, the 8,000 would have not been enough. I knew it. So that's why I wasn't interested in the list of things they were going to write for me. I knew that that would help me make an excuse. Because everything in the list will be important. But I was going to also use the miracle power of God to work things out for me. That's why you have to connect with God. What one man is spending a million naira on, you will probably do for a hundred thousand. And they'll be surprised. Once you are determined, then God says, all right, I'm with you on it. Go ahead. Then you find his seal is on it. But if you say you're going to depend on money, then you always need enough money to do everything you want to do. But depend on him. What they are needing 10 million to do, you will do with 1 million. That is part of the blessing. You find things you don't have to pay for. So don't depend on money. Depend on God. But you must follow his principle. He told you to save. He knows why. So that when he requests for it, you can give him. And when he tells you to use it, you can use it. It might be the deposit that you need. Imagine that you needed something that is worth a hundred million. And the man is ready to give it for 50,000. 50. The thing is a hundred million. He's ready to give it for 50,000. And he says, if you have 50,000, I'll give it to you. You say, hey, I don't have. Hey, hey, I don't have. Hey. Why? Because you spent everything. Then you realize when God told you to save, he knew why. We have done things with money that will surprise you. That how much and their values are so high. But you add the miracle power of God to it. And then they ask you, how much is it? You say five letters. F-E-I-T-H. If I catch you sleeping, you will be sorry. Don't even, don't, don't even let me suspect you. 
<laughs> so keep your eyes wide open. Don't rest your eyes. And if you are meditating on what I'm saying, keep your eyes open and meditate. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want to show you a few things on saving just now. Just, just relax. Tell somebody, relax. So that's the first thing. Learn to save. Start saving, no matter how much you are receiving. Start saving. Now, we will talk about where do you save? Do you put it in your house? Do you put it in the bank? Where do you now? You are saving what? Where do you save? Because that's an important thing. See? It's one thing to have something you want to save, but where do you save it? I'll tell you. Now, the things I'm sharing with you are important because... You see, they come from the word. And that's what gives credence to them. Let me give you an example. Genesis chapter 41. Let's read from verse 25. And Joseph said unto Pharaoh, The dream of Pharaoh is one. God has showed Pharaoh what he's about to do. You remember when Joseph interpreted Pharaoh's dream? You remember? Okay. Next. The seven good king are seven years. And the seven good years are seven years. The dream is one. Okay? Mm-hmm. And the seventh thing and ill-favored king that came up after them are seven years, and the seven empty years blasted with the east wind shall be seven years of famine. You, you know this story. Okay. Seven thin cows eating up seven fat cows. What a story. Verse 28. This is the thing which I have spoken unto Pharaoh. What God is about to do, he showeth unto Pharaoh. Next. Behold, there come seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Egypt. Seven years of plenty will come. And there shall arise after them seven years of famine. And all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of Egypt. And the famine shall consume the land. He says, you're going to have, says God is showing you in the dream what's going to happen, Pharaoh. Joseph is telling him the meaning of his dream. He says, you will have seven years of prosperity. After that, seven years of famine will come. And the famine will be so severe that the seven years of prosperity will be forgotten. It will consume the land. Next verse. And the plenty shall not be known in the land by reason of that famine following, for it shall be very grievous, very severe. 32. And for that, the dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice. It is because the thing is established by God, and God will shortly bring it to pass. Now therefore, let Pharaoh... Look out a man, discreet and wise, and set him over the land of Egypt. Now he's given him the revelation, and now he starts telling him how to solve the problem. Let Pharaoh do this, and let him appoint officers over the land, and take up the fifth part of the land of Egypt in the seven plenteous years. He says what? Save what? 20% in the seven plenteous years. Next verse. And let them gather all the food of those good years that come. And lay up corn under the hand of Pharaoh. And let them keep food in the cities. Next. And 